Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet, and welcome to another Daily Masters cast. And I keep using WASD to move the screen around for some reason. It never works, but yeah, that is uh, that is what happens when you play too many FPS games and uh, too much WoW as well. Yeah, so. Anyway, moving on, Daily Masters, and we are going to be moving on to the WCS Season 2. Um, round of 16, round of 32, all those sort of games, and the lead-ups as well, the North America, the uh, Korea, the European leagues, and getting a whole bunch of replays out of there for our Daily Masters cast. So, starting off this game, we do have our blue Protoss player down the bottom right side. It is going to be Grubby, of course, and... I haven't really cast too much of Grubby, basically just a couple of Daily Masters, but he is an extremely awesome player, and yeah, I can't remember if he actually gets into the uh, into the uh, quarterfinals of uh, WCS Season 2 Finals, but we will find out very, very soon, because we are going to be casting those games very, very soon, and you may be actually seeing them when you see this Daily Masters, depends on the timing, but anyway, moving on, on the bottom left side of the map, we do have a red Terran player, Polt. And, yeah, we know uh, quite a lot about Polt. We know that he is one of the most awesome Terran players out there. And we know that he can kick a lot of ass when he really wants to. And I assume, considering this is for the WCS Season 2 Final Tournament, he definitely does want to kick a lot of ass. So we're just going to be going through and seeing how these two players go in this tournament. So... Yeah, well not in this tournament, but just in this game, I suppose, and look at this probe coming around, having a bit of a scout, this guy going out for a bit of a scout as well, he's actually put his barracks quite a bit further back, um, not too worried about blocking off the ramp for that probe, I guess he, uh, I, I guess he either knew the probe was going to be coming in too fast for him to block it, or, yeah, I, I, I can't think of any other reason, probably just, uh, keep this a little bit safer so that um, units on the ramp couldn't hit it quite as easily but the probe is going to be getting easy access into the Terran base and not really seeing too much this thing is pretty standard stuff and meanwhile this guy going to be putting down the NG bay on the uh, expansion timing so very very nice there and this probe actually coming out he didn't have 400 uh, minerals who wasn't planning on expanding, but he is going to be quite pissed off and you can expect to see this Just being stopped building in uh, any second uh, No, he's going to continue to build it. He's going to go for as much as he can and there's the SEV Going to go down and unfortunately for Polt Not only does the uh, SEV do some juking and stay in there a little bit longer, but the Zealot actually um, actually going to be attacking this So Grubby is not going to be too put off by this. I mean Polt is Definitely making sure that he gets his expansion down first, but I feel like Grubby wasn't absolutely going for an expansion at that point anyway He didn't have the minerals So there we go and the Reaper coming in. This is a very very nice surprise move He's gonna take out the probe and look at the uh, Look at the amount of things going on man He is just having to spend a whole bunch of minerals to make up for that gap getting the mothership core getting the um, gateway tech going down so having to uh, mess up his build a little bit, just to keep dealing with this um, constant harassment, but did manage to put the uh, expansion down, and now this guy is going to go back into the main and straight into the Mothership Core. He may be able to kill a worker, but I very much doubt it if Grubby's macro is, uh, micro, sorry, is uh, up to scratch. Because there we go, the Reaper's going to hit this probe, and the probe is just going to run. And, oh, he did manage to kill it, though, but the Reaper had to run straight into all these forces to do it. And now he's on the very edge of death, so it's just going to be run, run, run. And, yeah, just find a safe place to try and heal up. And here we go, the Nexus is about three quarters of the way up. The Terran's already up, he's just converting it into orbital, so pretty nice play by Polt there to get his expansion up nice and early. But on the, uh, on the cross side, um, Grubby has not wasted... Those uh, those minerals when he was forced to delay his nexus, he has got up a uh, fair few uh, just ground units, mothership core, two stalkers and a zealot, and I feel like since his expansion has got up, Polt has been getting out a lot more um, lot more units. So maybe two, maybe a minute ago, a minute and a half, two minutes ago, Grubby could have moved out with those two stalkers and the zealot and made something happen here. 
But right now, Holt has had the chance to, uh, to yeah, go out here. And you see he actually only had one guy in there. So that was more than enough to scare the Stalker off because he, he's not going to look at his health and say, all right, I'm taking like four Marines worth of damage. He, he just knows he's being attacked. So he's like, all right, let's get the hell out of here. And I suppose you can sort of tell by how many little blips are coming out of the bunker approximately, how, um, how many Marines are in there, and also by the levels of noise. Because when you've got four Marines attacking, is an overlay of um, of the gorse rifles, of the uh, the bullet sounds co constantly coming at you, and it does sound like multiple people shooting at the same time, whereas if you just got one in there, it just sounds like one marine attacking. So I suppose you could tell that, but he didn't want to stand off one stalker against one marine when the marine's in the bunker, man. It's just not going to work. The marine will probably kill you and the Stalker just can't take out that much health. So he's going to be standing out here, and I don't know if he's watching for a third base or if he's just uh, putting this Stalker up to, uh, yeah, see if anything comes out. It'd be nice if there was a watchtower here, like a watchtower here and a watchtower there, something like that, or maybe even just one in the middle. I'm thinking of another base where the entrance is sort of like this. You come out and there's a little bit of rock over there and something like that, and there's a watchtower here. So... That might be a little bit overpowered though, because that's quite close to the third base. So we could put a watchtower there, see all the attacks coming in. Usually you want the watchtowers to be in a lot more neutral territory. You don't want to have your own uh, pet watchtower very, very close to your base. So yeah, here we go. Factory going out for a bit of a scout, and that means the Pult is definitely going for some very heavy Triple M stuff. He's got three barracks at the moment, and we can definitely expect him to get a bunch more barracks. But he's probably going to be concentrating on a third command center before he goes for um, for those extra barracks. And meanwhile, an observer coming out. This guy, Marine, going over there. I thought maybe there was a guy to expand, but not quite. My mouse is filling up a little bit. It's, uh, I don't know, I think it's relatively clean. I think the mouse pad is relatively clean. Ah, uh, all over the place now. But yeah, the observer continuing to go around and... Man, if he sees this base being built over here, he sees the SCV there, but it hasn't got enough to build. Looks like he is going to build there, and this uh, this observer is like, hey, yo, that is going to be awesome. But does he know about this force? Somehow they're just pushed out there, and he does see those guys coming through, and he does start to see this one Marine here. So this one Marine just scouting, and oh, he's going to have to cancel this really, really fast because they can stim in. Wipe it out before, there we go, so there's a cancel going down. And very, very scary, but once again, Pult, the perfect time out to uh, to cut his uh, his opponent's third base back. He did exactly the same thing with the expansion, got the timing down to knock the expansion back, and you can see the mineral count with Grubby. He really, really wants to get that third base down. Um, I don't know if he can actually spend those minerals. He's trying to spend them here, Spending on a whole bunch of stuff, but he's still got 400 rounds, so he really needs to uh, build that expansion, and there it goes. But the dropship's coming straight back, and he can land here and knock this out. He's actually going for the main, but the uh, the Colossus have got to be a bit careful. If they come up too fast, they are going to get sniped really, really badly. And there we go, the Triple M Force. They're starting to look quite a bit... Uh... <laughs> I was about to say, the Marine Force are trying, starting to look quite a bit grubby. They're starting to look quite a bit... Um, yeah, just world weary, sort of staying sort of low health on everything, man. They need to get healed up. And so there we go. And the Protoss Force starting to look okay. As we've seen with a lot of Protoss players, I think the previous Daily Masters game might have been something similar. They go for Colossus very, very early. And after they've started getting the Colossus out, they start to, uh, really start pumping in the ground units here. You can see he's actually not even going for the Zealot Links until now. He focuses everything on the Colossus tech and on the upgrades, of course, because it's, um, what are these guys got? They got one, one, and two armor on the way, so we can expect two weapons coming out very soon. And here's, I feel like this was another complete drop over here. Maybe? I don't know, but yeah, a bunch of stalkers over there, and Pult has got to know, after being chased away there and barely surviving, that uh, Grubby has got to be expecting these guys to drop down. So there are going to be stalkers here, so very wisely he chooses just to run away and live to fight another day. So very, very nice decision on his part. Meanwhile, getting up a ton of units, just buying himself time to get the units that he needs is basically what he's doing. And 
You can see he's got five Vikings out, so the perfect, absolutely perfect composition for him. Um, he needs to get a bit more medevacs. He's got three, but I feel like a couple more would definitely not hurt. Then see, this is the thing. You've got to balance your Viking numbers against your, against your medevac numbers because you need the medevacs and you need the Vikings. And right now, he's getting a ton of Vikings, but I feel like he should probably... Actually, no, there's three more medevacs coming back. They're in his base, so he is going to be fine. I didn't know those three medevacs were coming out. But here he goes, pushing in, and he could probably snipe this Nexus. He's got these forces down here taking care of the Nexus, and these forces taking care of the army. The Vikings actually doing a really good job of hitting the Colossus. And Grubby looks like he's a little bit undermanned here in terms of this, uh, this very, very heavy Triple M force, the Colossus getting taken out, and Grubby not really, uh, he, he didn't take care of the Vikings, and I suppose, I would have my doubts, even if there were no Vikings on the field, whether that uh, Protoss force would have taken care of the uh, Terrans, because he had about two or three Colossus, but the Terran had a beautiful concave, and he was, I think he was really just sort of, he put this force up here to hit the Protoss main, he set this force up here to take out the Nexus, he was expecting to get knocked back. He was expecting to take out the Nexus and this force would get hit hard, really, really hard. But then he would fall back, he would have taken out the Nexus and he would have lost more than he killed, but he would have taken out the Nexus. I think that was his play, but when he came in there and he saw that Grubby didn't actually have as much as he probably thought, he just kept pushing in, he just kept moving in. The Vikings were doing a beautiful job and they were not really getting hit at all couple of stalkers but nothing nothing sensational from Grubby and he just continued the push so Grubby man I mean the the, the fact was his uh, second and his third were delayed compared to the Terran so the Terran definitely had what he needed um, to get that uh, extra macro going and I think that might have been it um, so that's so that's the interesting thing I mean Grubby had his economy delayed not once but twice on the second base and on the third base and he still went for the high tech, he still went for the Colossus, and I wonder if he should have done that, because if you were delayed on your economy, and I mean, as soon as he saw the factory flying around, he's got to say, all right, Triple M is coming out, so that's, that's a definite, and whether he should have gone for a lot more just straight up ground units, like Zealot legs a little bit sooner, crap ton of Zealots, I don't know, maybe a crap load of stalkers, maybe get some immortals in there, because Colossus, I mean, you need, you need the front runners to really defend your Colossus, and they're so, they're so open to being attacked by Vikings, so they're a very good mid to late unit, but straight up mid game, because Vikings are so easy to get, and yeah, it's, it's quite hard, it's really, really quite hard, and you need to have those big armies where you have space to sort of blink stalker all over the place, to hit the Vikings when they go in for the flank and Archons tend to help as well. So very early to mid game, which is around this which is around this time, the Colossus are a bit dicey when you're facing off just against pure Triple M because it's so easy to get Vikings. I mean you've already got the Medivacs being built, so Vikings easy as and they're they're quite cheap. I mean 75 gas for an air unit, I it's, it's quite cheap, I think. Uh, compared to a Colossus, which is like 200 gas or something stupid like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's 200 gas. Yeah, but uh, I may be wrong about that, and if I am, please let me know. But yeah, just just this massive Triple M Force, and it's really, really bad because he had the, he had the economy chopped off from under him, and I think that should have been a signal to go for some more low-cost, high, high-capacity units, like just a massive Zealot Stalker army. Get the legs, maybe get the blink afterwards, um, and maybe a few Immortals to take care of the Marauders, because, I mean, you get Colossus, and you really can't afford to get a lot of ground forces, and you need a lot of ground forces at this point in the game when you're facing this sort of army, because you cannot get three or four classes and enough army to uh, purposely shield them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just it's just not working. And I mean, in the late game, you can get classes all you want, and you can get Void Rays, and the Void Rays can, um, can counter flank the Vikings. So the Vikings try and flank your Colossus, you get the Void Rays in, you overcharge them, poof. Not only do the Vikings 
automatically attack the Void Rays over the Colossus, but if the Void Rays are in range, then the Vikings just get destroyed. The Vikings have a bigger range, but if they're trying to kite the Void Rays, then not only is the Terran player having to spend a lot of micro to kite the Void Rays, and the Protoss player doesn't have to spend any micro because the Void Rays just, just attack move, you can just like have an attack waypoint on all the Vikings, or just attack move. But yeah, I mean, it's just the Void Rays do so much damage to armor; they would shred. Even if you had two Void Ray, uh, two Vikings for every Void Ray, I feel like the Void Rays would just shred them. But at this point, at the 15 minute mark, you cannot get Colossus and enough ground units to protect them and Void Rays. It's impossible. So, you, you, if you go for Colossus you leave yourself open to very, very early uh, Vikings, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So, yeah, at that point, I would have said, all right, Polt has the economic advantage. Maybe not. Maybe Colossus isn't a good idea, because I don't know if I'm going to last that long. And with the attacks at the 15-minute mark, I don't know if I can hold him off. So anyway, there we go. Thank you very, very much for watching this game, and I will catch you guys tomorrow for another Daily Masters. This has been Harry Muppet. I hope you enjoyed this game.